Okay, so one of the things that we're going to have to create in Revit uh, for the Sterling Cooper project are uh, a series of details. One is this footing detail here, uh, and this is on page 27 uh, in the part 4 of 4 handout. And then the other one is this uh, building section here. Now, in your schematic design package that you guys handed in a little bit earlier in the semester, you already have this um, section cut created. The only thing that we're going to do is just add a little bit of information. One, we're going to add a little bit more detail into that roof. Uh, two, we're going to add in some more detail into these uh, concrete masonry units, adding brick to the exterior, some dimensions, um, and then adding some text onto the outside of the of the uh, 3D view here. So, what I'm going to do is going to show you how to how to create these kind of views in Revit. And so, let me switch over to our Revit project. So here it is. Uh, this is the detail view, the footing detail view, in Revit. And let me go to the wall section here. Then this is what that wall section looks like in Revit. And then also I have a um, a detail call out uh, from that wall section to the uh, detail, the footing detail on there. So if I double click this, it takes me right to that detail view. All right, so let me just kind of let's take a look at one of our typical building sections. Let's go to actually this one. Nah, let's go to this one. Let's go to the first building section. All right, so this is our building section. This is just one of the typical building sections. Uh, this is the one through the lobby. And this is about as detailed uh, as Revit gets in, um, in when you're drawing a section. So Revit doesn't really have a whole lot of detail. It breaks up the wall into a series of layers, um, but it doesn't actually break up the actual layers into individual elements. So, for example, you've got this big old hatch here that represents the concrete masonry units in that wall, and you've got this hatched area here that represents the brick, but it doesn't actually divide it into, that, uh, into the actual bricks itself. So let me go to my wall section. All right, so here's my wall section showing the individual bricks themselves. But you'll notice that the individual bricks themselves are actually 2D information that was actually added and layered on top of that 3D building section. So really, it's just a lot of kind of smoke and mirrors with uh, with drawing um, 3D details in Revit. So on this particular one here, we're going to take that original section that we did in the schematic design, and we're just going to add 2D information over the top of that view. Now for the footing detail, we're going to try a different strategy. This is all just 2D information. So this is basically almost like back to AutoCAD, drawing uh, 2D information on top of there. Uh, and the commands that we're going to use for both of these exercises are here on the annotation tab, and they're under here under detail. So, and actually, the only three really that we're going to be using is detail line, region, and component. So it's basically these three commands right here to do those two details, the footing detail and the wall section detail. All right, uh, and then in addition to that, we're going to be using text, which you're all familiar with, text with leaders, and some of these dimensions over here to uh, put in the dimension information. But aside from that, yeah, we're basically doing uh, 2D information. All right, so let me first show you how to start out this uh, footing detail. There's basically a series of five steps to uh, setting this thing up. Then what I'll do is go through each of these commands individually, and then I'll show you how to actually put them all together when you're creating this detail. All right, so let me go to our elevation, or one of our plan views. All right, so to create that detail, what we want to do is we're actually going to start off in the View tab. All right, and what I'm looking for is Drafting View. All right, that's what our footing detail is going to start out as. So it's going to be starting out as a Drafting View from the View tab. So I click on Drafting View, so that's step one. All right, step two is basically giving it a name. So if I go back to our part four of four handout, we're just going to call this guy fo footing detail. All right. So I'll go back here. So let's call this guy caps. All right, and then our scale. Let's go to our scale. Our scale, I think I put it on the handout here. Let's see. Yeah, the footing detail shall be drawn at three inches equals a foot. All right, so that's going to be our scale. So that is step three, is giving it a scale. All right, and then say OK. All right, oops, I got to give it a unique name. I already created this one, so let's call it uh, detail uh, footing detail two. All right, yours will be just plain old footing detail, but since I already created one in this file. OK, so step four then is to set your detail level to fine which it should by default already be there, but I go to Fine. So here on the View Control Bar down at the bottom, I just select Fine. 
All right, and then the last thing you're going to do is you're going to load in your 2D decal components. So going over here to the annotation tab, here's where you're going to load in those 2D detail components. Now it's important to note that you've got this components command, so notice this is called components, but if you go to your architecture tab, you have another thing called components here. It's grayed out because I'm in a, a detail view, but this is components. So this is where we load in our windows, doors. Now you'll notice a very subtle difference here. This one is 3D. If you can see the little boxes there, they're in 3D. If I go to annotate, it's in 2D. So what we're doing here is we're loading in 2D components versus over here on the architecture tab loading in 3D components. All right, so that's the subtle difference between the two. They really should call this one just plain old 2D components and the other one 3D components to kind of prevent people from making that mistake. But um, all right, so 2D components, and uh, so that's going to be our first step. Now, before we get there, though, before we kind of load in those 2D components, let me go through th these three commands, the detail lines, region, and component commands first, um, and that way it'll make a little bit more sense. So, okay, so detail line, uber simple. Uh, this is basically where you draw uh, single lines. So if I go to here, uh, I, I went to detail line. Over here is line style, so I can pick a hidden line, which is basically just dashed, um, a medium sized line, a thin line, or a wide line. Um, or I can pick a center line, so on and so forth. So let me pick up, let's just do a medium line. All right, and it's just basically simply just drawing lines here. All right, so that's just the, just simple 2D lines. Um, let's change the line type to hidden line. So that gives you a nice dashed line. All right, um, so that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So that's detail lines, and that's just drawing 2D line components. Here you pick the line style. Here you pick the weight of you know the, um, the draw command. However you want to draw those uh, those lines. If I want to draw a circle, so on and so forth. Okay, so one thing about that detail line, just as a as a way of modifying it, uh, you get a series of line styles here under line styles, but you may find, hey, that's not. Th I, I need more lines. I need. I um. I want kind of a, a different type of line. I've got a center line here. You know, maybe I want a different type of line or a different type of line style. So let me just show you real quick how to create a new line style if uh, if you find or when you're drawing this, uh, you're going to need one. All right, so creating a new line style is under the Manage tab, under Additional Settings, and then under Line Styles. All right, so Manage, Additional Settings, Line Styles. And once you get here, you have to hit this little plus button next to Lines to show you all the different line styles. Those guys should all look familiar. Those are the line styles that you had before. All right, so what you want to do is you want to create a new line style. I'm just going to go down here to the lower right-hand side under New. And I'm going to just call this one um, dash dot. All right, so we'll call this dash dot. All right, so there's my new line style. I want to change its thickness. So here's the thickness of the line here. Um, and notice the thick one, it, it goes up from 1 to, I think, about 16. Let's see, what's the highest you can go? Yeah, 1 to 16. Obviously, 1 being the lightest, 16 being the heaviest. Let's pick a 5. I can pick my line color, which in most cases it's going to be black, but I could put purple if I wanted to. But just for this, for the sake of this, we're just going to say um, black. And then it can be a solid, but we're going to make it. Uh, we're going to pick a different line pattern. So in here is where you'd pick like the hatch. I'm sorry, the hidden line or the dash line or the dash dot in our particular case. So let's go scroll down here. And hey, look, there's dash dot. All right, so I'm going to pick dash dot for our line pattern. All right, so we've got a thick line, black, and it's got a dash dot line style and then I hit OK. Alright, so now I've got it. So now when I go into annotate detail lines. Alright, sorry, detail lines. Ah, there you go. Uh, if I go to line styles, there's dash dot. And it'll draw it here and you can see there it's just a dash and a dot. Alright, so that's if you need to create a new line style. Alright, so let's go back to annotate and let's go to region. So region has two of them. You have masking region and filled region. All right, so I'll do filled region. Essentially, when you think of region, just think of the hatch command in AutoCAD. That's basically all this is. Uh, so filled region, let's do that one first. All right, so what you do is you select filled region, goes into sketch mode, and what you do is you just basically create a shape. Point, do, 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 do. It has to be a closed loop, so it's got to, you know, kind of all the endpoints have to line up. 
All right, and then what you do is then pick the hatch pattern that you want. So I've got a couple in here loaded. I'm going to say Earth for that one. So I select Earth for my hatch pattern, and then I hit Finish, and there it is. So basically all it is is you're drawing the outline of something, and then within it, Revit infills it with a hatch pattern. Now there's a couple of things you can do here, so let me just kind of go over this in a little bit more detail. I'm going to go back. If I want to edit this again, I'm going to select it, go to Edit Boundary, and then if I want to pick different line styles, I can pick the line, and instead of being a thin line, I want this one to be a wide line, and these two at the bottom, I want to be invisible, right? So if I go pick these three at the bottom, I go to Line Styles, and I can make those invisible. And so now when I hit Finish, and I hit Thin Lines, so this one shows up a little bit thicker. These two at the bottom show up without a boundary, like without a boundary line. All right. Okay, so then the trick here, let's just create another one of these. Do, 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 do. All right, I'm going to create concrete over here. Actually, no, let's do earth on that one too. All right, so I've got two, got two uh, uh, filled regions. All right, but this one, instead of being earth, I want it to be concrete. So I want to create a new hatch pattern. Actually, I'm going to make it wood because I don't know if I have a wood yet. But um, I'm going to make this a wood grain pattern here. All right, so I pick this one. Now remember, both of these are earth. Like both of these have the hatch pattern, uh, the filled region called earth. Now I want to create a uh, a new one called uh, wood. So to do that, I'm going to go to the same process that we do when we create walls or windows or things like that. I go edit type, duplicate, give it a new name. All right, I'll call it wood. And then, uh, so now that I've got a new type created, then I go in and pick the new fill pattern. All right, and I select that from uh, there. All right, and that looks like a nice wood grain pattern. So I go wood three and say OK. All right, and I can make it the background opaque or transparent if I want. Let's go with transparent for the heck of it. And then hit OK. And there you go. So now I've got two. So let me. So that's basically how you create more. You're going to create multiple. Probably in this project, you're going to probably create two or three different new fill patterns on this. Because um, I don't think, I have concrete in here, but I don't think concrete exists. Um, uh, so that one's probably one you're going to have to create. Now let me show you a, a something that usually typically happens. This is a common mistake. Um, and it could be kind of, if you if you don't notice it right after you make it, then it could be a big problem uh, later on. So, okay, so now let's go back, and that's, this is Earth, and I'm going to create a new hatch pattern called Wood. All right, so this is what happens when I skip a step, step. I select this guy here, I go to Edit Type, and I say, instead of Earth, I want a Wood Hatch. So I go down here and hit Wood 3, and I say OK, and then OK again, and notice it changed them both to wood Be forgot, because I forgot to duplicate and uh, to create a new type. So what happened was I went in here, I went edit type. This one's still earth. This one's still the hatch pad, the fill region called earth. And all I did was just change the hatch pattern on earth to wood. And what it did was it every place where I have earth, it changed it to wood. So make sure when you do that, you go pick the thing, go edit type, duplicate, and give it a new name. All right, so make sure you do that step because, uh, or um, or you'll change all of them. Okay, so that is the the uh, the region uh, the filled region. The other one is called masking region, and I'll show you what that one does here in a minute. This is basically whiteout. That's basically what this command is called. Uh, you go masking region, and what it is is you create a uh, a shape. All right, and then you hit finish, and basically what it does is it just creates a white block over it. So it's like, so that's why I call it the whiteout command. Uh, the other thing you can do with it, if I go edit type, I can change all of its line types to invisible. All right, so now it doesn't have a boundary, so it's called that, so it basically blanks things out. Now, why would you want to use that? I'll show you in a little bit. Um, all right, let's, let's actually just delete it for a second here. Okay, so those are, annotate, okay, that's region. Ah, sorry. All right, annotate. All right, so those region, fill region, and masking region. All right, the last one is detail, or is called component, but it's 2D components. And essentially, so now I've gone into a component. I go to my type selector, and in here, what you're going to do is you're going to load all these guys in here. And these are all just 2D components, and you've got all kinds of fun stuff in here. You've got uh, a, a wide flange uh, beam, all right, and I've got a W14 by 26, 
And so what it is is, oops, wrong one. All right, they basically these are just pre-drawn uh, construction elements, and you can basically drag them and drop them into your project. So I've got a brick section. There's just a brick, just a single brick. Um, I've got CMUs. Yeah, I preloaded these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you guys. Uh, what I'll do is uh, you'll need to load a couple of these. You're going to need to load like four or five of them in there. Uh, I'll show you how to load them, and I'll show you where to find them, and I'll send it to you in an email, and I'll post it as a announcement on uh, Blackboard. So that way you'll know where to find them. But I'll, I'll tell you where to find them here in a second. But all right, so here's a CMU. We want the eight by eight by sixteen. All right, there you go. So it's pre-drawn for you. So these are just basically 2D elements, 2D things of building components that are pre-drawn for you uh, that you want to load into the project. Uh, saves a lot of time. And to load these basically in is I go to Component, go to Load Family, takes me to the U.S. Imperial Library, and you want to when you're doing 2D elements, you just go straight to Detail Items. All right, so Detail Items, so U.S. Imperial Library, Detail Items. And then all those pieces parts are located here and under detail items. Now notice, remember in the beginning of the semester we talked about CSI master format uh, and had all those 42 div divisions and all that kind of stuff. That's how all this stuff is organized. So if I wanted to add that concrete masonry unit or that CMU, I would go to masonry, so division four, and then I would go to concrete unit masonry, and then I've got CMU two core, and I got a section view of that. So there, and there's my CMU2 core. Open, loads that into the project. Then when I go back to uh, CMU, what do I have? Three CMU3 core section. You probably want two core instead. I don't know why I have three core in there. Oh, did I? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I have it. I do have a two core in there. I accidentally. Yeah, I must hit the wrong one. Um, all right, so we want CMU two core, and then so you, it loads in the whole family. So it's got a bunch of them. So it doesn't just have the sixteen or the eight by eight by sixteen. It's got the two by eight by sixteen. So it basically has every CMU size manufactured. All right, so I got my eight by eight by sixteen. I load it in there. There it is. All right, so those are basically. So that's kind of the first thing you want to load into your project. So let's like, take a look at our handout. All right, so this is what I got in there. I've got that CMU, the two core eight by eight by sixteen. I've got a brick in there. Uh, what else? I've got this steel angle here. I've got this uh, twenty LH02 bar joist in there. Uh, the metal decking. All right, and that's it. So those are all the the two D detail components I have loaded in into my project. Yeah, the the two core, the brick. Um, I have to I'd have to check. And then the steel angle, the metal deck, and the um, and the bar joist. All right. So now, when I go back to my project file, and I go back to that detail, where is it? Here, footing detail. All right. Here it is. So here's that 2D bar joist. There. There's my steel bar joist. Here's my metal deck. Oops. I didn't put the angle in yet. I will put it in. And then here's my CMU two uh, uh, two core. And then here's my brick, and it's a uh, brick standard with a 3 8 inch joint. All right, and then everything else is, um, this I drew in as 2D information. So like, for example, the, the rebar that I've got going through here is drawn as 2D. It's just a line, a circle. All right, I've got, this is here, this is representing my, what is that, my moisture barrier. So that's just a dashed line, and then... Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, if you can, if you want to, you can go ahead and and uh, load in uh, a detail component too for the for the rebar if you want. Um, the d gypsum board out here is just two D. Uh, it's a series of t um, uh, single drafting lines. Uh, the base, is schedule, that is actually a, a filled region. Actually, no, it's a masking region. And then, yeah, some the the detail in the sheet. If it, it, yeah, so the one, okay, so if it's not on, so this one, yeah, this one doesn't have rubber base. All, 
when you draw this, draw this. All right, go by this. Don't go by what I actually have in my Revit model because I may have done it a little bit different. Sometimes I get a little carried away on my Revit model. Yeah. Yeah, yep, LH02. Let's see. I've got 20 LH02. So I'm not real sure why the one on the handout doesn't, but when you load this in, when you load in, so long as you load in the LH02, um, 20 LH02, that it should look like this. What's what is the difference? What's the big difference between the two? Correct. Yeah. So yeah, let me go piece by piece on how I did each one of these parts. Yeah. So what I did was okay. So remember that masking region, my whiteout, I call it. That's what I actually. That's I use that to cover all that information up. So I use that masking region to kind of clean up all my ugly edges. So this is what that 20 LH02 really looks like. Yeah. That's what it really looks like when you load it in. Yeah. Yep. Yep. LH series bar joist side view, right? And then. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So make sure you use side view. Correct, yep. All right, and then I use the masking region to kind of cover that up. The concrete here for the over the metal decking is a filled region. So that's a filled region there. This uh, cavity drainage material is a filled region as well. Um, the Let's see, the uh, through wall flashing is just a single series of single lines. This little grout here is a filled region. The concrete footing here is filled region. The uh, earth hatch here is filled region. Uh, oddly enough, they don't have this symbol in there in their, uh, that I could find in the 2D components. So what I did is I just did a circle. Like I do 2D lines there and there, and then filled regions here and here. So I actually had to create that symbol on my own uh, because it just didn't exist for some reason. I couldn't find it anyways um, in there. Then the rest of this information is just uh, simple dimensions and uh, text with leaders. And when you do this, make sure that you use either the three, uh, sorry, one eighth or three thirty seconds text size. That was that was a uh, fill region. Oh yeah, with an egg. That one. Oops. Yeah. Okay. That one. That one is a well. Basically, what it is it's a a steel plate with an anchor bolt on, welded to the bottom of it. Yeah. So you need something to weld that joist to. Yeah. 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 Fill region, yeah. Uh, this one I didn't. On this one, I was lazy. I didn't draw the little tail or the the bolt that goes down into it. But yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then yeah. So that's basically it for this guy here. There was one other thing. Oh, brake line. I put in a brake line here. This uh, little brake line up here. That's another uh, detail component um, that's in there under annotations. But but basically what that is is just uh It's got a little. It's basically a line with a um oh what do you call it a filled region or a masking region on top of it and i just use that to kind of cover up this ugliness so if i delete it basically showing kind of the top of that stuff so i used it to kind of just clean up the detail the steel angle uh that's under like where to locate the the detail component Is it it's under uh, detail component and detail items, steel, yeah, metals, uh, steel framing, I think is what it was. It's not cold formed. Ah, structural steel framing. And then AISC angle shapes side. Oops, section. Sorry, section. AISC angle shapes section. If you open it, you get a type selector. And which one did I use? I used the probably on the handout. Two by two and a half inch by two and a half by a quarter steel angle. 
and then just drop that in there. Um, let's see here. Okay. And so that's basically how you're going to um, you basically assume that. Now, the first thing I usually start off with is, like I said in step five here, is load in all those 2D components. That's probably the best way to start this detail, is load in all those 2D components and start arranging them and then base your detail off of that information. Like, then add in all the other information from that. All right, and let me go back to our project file. Oops, that was in the project file. All right, and then all you're going to do is once you finish that, then um, then you could just drag and drop that detail onto that sheet, and you should be all set. So, any questions on that so far on that on the how to draw that detail? No, actually, I usually just draw it in the detail view itself, and then once I'm finished and cl have it cleaned up and everything like that, then I drop it onto the sheet. But you could do it either way. It, yeah, it really doesn't matter. All right, any other questions? Nope. All right, cool.